Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Okay, so I'm sitting here, and obviously I'm in shock once again, but I always try to look at the silver lining, I always try to look at the glass being half full rather than half empty. I'm sitting here asking myself, are we going to see something positive come from yet again another negative? Such a horrible event, yet again another attempted assassination on the former president of the United States, and a great president at that. It's yet again another another horrifying moment in American history, but the hope is that maybe, finally, people are going to start waking up and seeing what's really happening here, how the media is obviously complicit. The hope here, or I guess the silver lining that I was mentioning earlier, is that hopefully people's eyes are finally waking up to the media's behavior in all this. From the ABC News debate to now this, their hatred for the former president is once again on full display, and obviously it's part of this whole equation. Let's have a conversation about that. We got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, folks. So it's pretty much exactly what I said in the introduction. You know, hopefully people are paying attention. The former president of the United States almost gets shot by a left-wing radical once again, and the mainstream media's reaction is, well, Trump's to blame for his own assassination attempt. Here's NBC's Lester Holt. Donald Trump's assassination attempt comes right after his horrible, racist comments about Springfield, Ohio. Today's apparent assassination attempt comes amid increasingly fierce rhetoric on the campaign trail itself. Mr. Trump, his running mate J.D. Vance, continue to make baseless claims about Haitian immigrants in Ohio. This weekend, there were new bomb threats in that town. Our Maggie Vespa is in Columbus, Ohio, with more. Lester, simply put, Springfield, Ohio has been inundated by threats. Over the last several days, closing government buildings, schools, hospitals. Today, effectively closing a local university campus after administrators said someone threatened a mass shooting targeting Haitians. This in light of, officials say, a false online conspiracy theory alleging Haitian immigrants in that city are eating people's pets. I mean, obviously, you get the implication. Donald Trump did it to himself. Donald Trump's racist comments essentially brought the violence upon him. I mean, that really seems to be the angle here. CNN pushed the same nonsense on Jim Acosta's show. This is the second assassination attempt, so I think we need to put more resources towards this. But I think we also have to address some underlying issues that are going on here as well. This really seems to be the confluence of two very bad um, very bad things going on in the Republican Party. On one side, the attempts to divide, to enrage the population, to put out false rumors and misinformation. Um, we know the, the mayor in Springfield is begging the Republican Party to stop with the false information on immigrants. They have portions of the town on lockdown at this point and an increase in all of the partisanship and um, the fear mongering that's going on. And then on the other side, we have this complete availability of assault rifle rifles to, it seems, almost anyone who wants to have access. Yep, you know, it's just the consequences of being a racist Republican. If you ask questions about our terrible immigration policies, well, we're going to call you a racist. And then some insane person who watches MSNBC all day will attempt to carry out an atrocious act. That is essentially what I'm hearing. He's bringing it upon himself by saying the things that he's saying that we so deeply disagree with and that get our voters really angry. And then, well, you know, what can you do? Agree with us or else. That's really what it feels like they're saying here. And that honestly is a truly disgusting approach. I mean, we're talking about the 45th president of the United States here and the coverage is Trump got shot. Let's immediately talk about cats being eaten in Ohio. I mean, that's insane. But that's literally exactly what's happening. I also uh, spoke just recently, Lindsay, uh, with a former member of the president's Secret Service detail, former president's detail, when he was in the president, when he was in the White House, who described how difficult it is to secure Secure uh, the area when he is playing golf, particularly at that golf course, the golf course that he usually plays when he is at Mar-a-Lago. Uh, this former agent told me uh, that if the Secret Service had not spotted the muzzle of that gun sticking through the uh, the, uh, the fence, uh, that he, he would have had potentially an unfettered shot of less than 100 yards away, uh, and that this very well could have been a successful assassination. 
Wow. All right, Jonathan Carl, our thanks to you. Now to the race for the White House. Ohio's Republican governor is calling for an end to debunk claims that Haitian immigrants in the town of Springfield are eating pets belonging to residents. But Senator J.D. Vance and the Trump campaign are doubling down on those claims. Here's ABC's Perry Russell. It's disgraceful. They don't have a care in the world. What's going on in Springfield? It shouldn't even be a topic of discussion right now. But it's all Democrats want to talk about because they want to tie this to the current political event and and somehow get out of it unscathed. And the way they do that is obviously by just pitting it on Donald Trump. Well, well, you know, Trump's just doing it to himself. He stubbed his own toe. Okay, now on to the next one. He's racist. And why he deserved this. Absolutely insane. I mean, the direction of this conversation. I'm just going to keep playing these clips. Here's one from MSNBC. The whole thing has yet to be 100% confirmed uh, from start to finish how this all played out. But do you expect to hear anything from the Trump campaign about toning down the rhetoric, toning down the violence, or would that be atypical of uh, the former president? Well, Alex, remember back to the assassination attempt on President Trump's life and how, you know, there was talk of a new tone and then the, re the Republican convention was by Trumpian standards muted. And it did seem like he was, you know, just trying to take it down a few notches. But then by the end of his convention speech, you know, we were kind of back to where uh, we started. So I don't know how long this could, you know, this moment of unity for the country where we come together and we say, I don't want any political opposition to be under threat of violence. It's not, okay, any threat of violence, you know, we don't want. I, I would love for us to have a unity type moment, but I think it's probably going to be pretty fleeting as we've seen in the past. You know, the conversation we probably should be having, considering all the information that's already dropped about the suspect, you would think there'd be some mention relating to left-wing rhetoric, right? We know the shooter's motives. We already know his connections. You'd expect the media to be reporting on that, but of course not complete ghost town in that department. It seems the media is fixated on one thing and one thing alone. Donald Trump. Trump toning down his violent rhetoric. What violent rhetoric are they talking about? It makes no sense. Trump says to go home and be peaceful, and they say he said go into the Capitol and commit an insurrection. I mean, it's the complete opposite. Trump says he won't sign a national abortion bill, doesn't want to ban IVF, and they say he believes the exact opposite. Trump says he was not talking about the neo-Nazis when he was saying that there were very fine people on both sides, and the media says the opposite. It's just pure, unadulterated hatred and partisanship. Donald Trump bad, Donald Trump's literally Hitler. Then something violent happens, and Trump is still bad, and he brought it upon himself, and he's ultimately to blame for it. You know, it fits the bill for this extreme, widespread gaslighting campaign that we've been enduring. The left at large, the leftist media establishment, grabs your wrist, forms your hand into a fist, and starts punching you relentlessly into the face, and then they ask you, why are you punching yourself, bro? They're causing all this hatred, radicalism, extremism, all this this division and then saying why are you guys doing it it's you it's you and your evil orange man who caused all this i mean they're the freaking arsonists calling the firefighters it's just so unbelievable and really unbelievably obvious and i'm again asking the same question you know are people finally gonna wake up are they gonna see it we saw the 3v1 during the abc debate and now this isn't it just so obvious what's happening anyways that's pretty much what i got for you guys on this one hopefully you enjoyed it if you did make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.